Hi everyone! Today we are flipping through the latest release from Color Ya. This is Mandala's Magical Nature in Night. Ooh. <laughs> um, as with all Color Ya books, they do have the spiral binding. Mine got a little beaten up in shipping, but it's not a big deal. You can actually just push them back. So spiral binding, always nice. This released um, yesterday. So exciting. Now, usually when they say night for color, ya, yeah, that means everything's got the black background. That saves you a lot of hassle of worrying about backgrounds. All right, so let's see what they got. Here is the title page on this thick, so thick cardstock that <laughs> I was like, where? It's one page. But do you hear how thick that is? So you can use a lot of different mediums on that. This is just their info page. Now, Color Yacht is a French company. However, they are available on Amazon US. Um, so I will leave a link in the description below. This is just their in uh, info page. Now let's get to the drawings. So that is actually really pretty. <laughs> First off the bat. So these are kind of like unique mandala styles. Um, it's animals in these pages are so thick that I have to make sure I'm not skipping one. So like this is a more traditional mandala here. But then like this one here is more like Zen Tangle. <clears throat> but you don't have to color them realistic. You could pick a random color like off the Sarah Renee Clark one. Although this one actually is really pretty. I mean, just think of the fun colors you could do. And you can use watercolor on these pages. They take water really well. That's actually really fun. Uh, they take alcohol marker well. Because they are so thick, they don't really bleed whatsoever through. Um, Water-based markers go well. You don't get any pilling or anything unless you're constantly going back and forth. So just make sure you let each layer dry before you go and add another. But that's with pretty much most adult coloring books, um, so that's not just their paper or anything. That'd be perfect for fall. I like that one. So yeah, you can do random color palettes or, you know, go for a more realistic. That's a really pretty one. I love the hibiscus. Just trying to make sure I don't miss a page because they are such thick cardstock pages here. Ooh, this one. You could actually turn this one into a Christmassy one if you wanted. Okay. So you have some landscape, some portrait. Now it is spiral bound, but it's not perforated. This would be a fun one to do. Like I said, they're not your traditional mandalas. The mandala is within the design itself rather than a circular mandala. Gel pens are always a good choice <laughs> for these types. But the whole point is just like to relax. Oh, that would be so fun for fall as well. Just think of the fall palette you could do like purples and oranges and brown. And it would look really cute. Even that one, actually, with the leaves and such. That's pretty. This one's a little more detailed, but that's the whole point. That's why I say it's kind of a cross between mandalas and Zen Tangle. Sorry, <laughs> it keeps sliding downward. Oh, this is... I can't remember what the name of that animal is, but... Oh, I like this one. This would be fun. Do a nice purples and blues on that. And gold sparkles. And just because this is a black background doesn't mean you can't add, like, a shimmery finish to it. In fact, I can even show you an example once we flip through. That's a really pretty one. This one, it's, I think a little squirrel. Oh, that, that would be so pretty. And 
that is the end of this one. Now this is a long book, so I had to zoom out quite a bit. But I want to show you an example of how you can still add some sparkle and fun to these backgrounds, despite the fact that they are all black. So let me grab something real quick. Okay, so I just went to the blotter page, or what I'm going to call the blotter page. And then I grabbed out my Folk Art Extreme Glitter, um, some Folk Art Glitterific in Black Opal. I have both the fine and the other kind. <laughs> and then Folk Art Glitterific in, oh gosh, what color name is this? I swear it has a color name, but I can't find it. Gold for now is what we're doing. But I just want to show you some examples of how you can get... Well, this one is, this one needs some, it's a little dry, so I just need to hit it with a wet brush is all. Okay, there we go. All right, so for example, this is a very thick glitter paint, so you're going to get massive chunks, but yes, my page looks wet at the moment. Let me rinse this off so I can grab a different one, because I do not want big glittery chunks stuck on my brush. Now I'll show you with a fine, and don't worry, I'll zoom you in. I'm just showing you how you could add a bunch of sparkle. Now this is that Glitterific Fine color. I highly recommend getting these at like Michael's and Joann's. And when you're working with these, on any book, not just color, yeah. So like this one here, this is specifically meant to be super chunky. So you'll want to just keep picking it up and layering it till you get that chunk amount you want. Same with this one. I mean, pretty much it has something in there to help with the glitter, but it's really just meant to be glitter. So think of it like Mod Podge, which you could also use, the Glitter Mod Podge. Now this is the Folk Art Extreme Glitter Holographic one my all-time favorite. Now this one comes out white, so it's milky. And I know when you look at that, you're like, ah, <laughs> but you have to wait for it to dry. Now this is one where you'll have to apply it evenly. Oh, I got some little gunk. That's uh, for my brush, not the paint. So see how it's kind of milky right now? But once it dries, it'll be totally different. Now, I highly recommend wiping off your brush if you use glitter paints in a paint puck because it takes all the glitter out of your bristles. See? Glitter free! <laughs> so just something to keep in mind. So let me dry these real quick with my heat tool and then I'll be back to show you. Okay, so I used my Ranger heat tool. Now I want to show you, this is that holographic minus my little chunk that came off. But see how I added the shimmer to the page? <laughs> a lot of shimmer. Now you're always going to have like this little streak, even when it's dry. That's because that was the binder of the paint. So obviously if I was doing this um, to color up my background, I would use or paint the whole page with it. That way it's nice and even. But look at how much the glitter stands out on the black. Same thing with this one. Even though it's not fine, ultra fine, like holographic glitter, this is that glitterific, so it's chunkier, but that would be so cool as a background on the black. And the paper takes it, it doesn't buckle at all. Now this is the glitterific fine glitter that was an opal black. Now it's black glitter on black paper, but look at that. Isn't that nifty? So it still shows up. And again, you're gonna get this glazing effect because that's the binder holding all that together. So just paint your whole page. While I was, uh, <laughs> you know, drying, I decided to also grab a dragon dragonfly glaze. Wow, words. And this is the green, gold, red shift, which is that right there. Now this is actually, oop, I don't want to zoom in. It's white when you put it on, but when it dries, this is one of the these uh, dragonfly glazes are like one of the best, but see that shimmer? Look at that one. You can see all the red and the gold on the black, and this won't show as much of the binder because of the way it's formulated. So yeah, I just wanted to show you how even with a black background, you can add 
ton of accents and still like make it your own plus color in all the elements. So thank you everyone for hanging out with me and a special thank you to the team at Color Ya for sending this to me. And until next time, take care. Bye now.